Yeah. Incredible, isn't she? I'm good, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Hey, buddy, can you say that? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> We're already married. We're okay. Yeah, no. <laughs> okay. You okay? Yes, you do. Holy whoa! Can we get a round of applause for her? Holy. No. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Dearly beloved. <laughs> We have come together in the presence of God to witness and bless the joining together of this man and this woman in holy matrimony. The bond and covenant of marriage was established by God and his creation, and our Lord Jesus Christ adorned this manner of life by his presence and first miracle at a wedding in Cana of Galilee. It signifies to us 
the mystery of the union between Christ and his church, and Holy Scripture commends it to be honored among all people. The union of husband and wife in heart, body, and mind is intended by God for their mutual joy, for the help and comfort given to one another in prosperity and adversity, and when it is God's will for the procreation of children and their nurture, knowledge, and love of the Lord. Therefore, marriage is not to be entered into unadvisedly or lightly, but reverently, deliberately, and in accordance with the purposes for which it was instituted by God. Friends in Christ here, we are gathered together with Sam and Monica, who have come together today to give thanks to God for his blessing upon their marriage and to reaffirm their marriage covenant. Sam, you have taken Monica to be your wife. Do you promise to love her, comfort her, honor and keep her in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others to be faithful to her as long as you both shall live? I do. <laughs> Monica, you have taken Sam to be your husband. Do you promise to love him, comfort him, honor and keep him in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, be faithful to him as long as you both shall live? I do. The answer for you guys is we will. Will you who have witnessed these promises do all in your power to uphold these two persons in their marriage? We will. I need to hear it a little bit louder than that. <laughs> will you who have witnessed these promises do all in your power to uphold these two persons in their marriage? We, we will. I invite you all who have chairs to be seated for the reading. I did a light reading for you guys. I didn't make you have to stand for it forever. A reading from St. Paul's letter to the Corinthians. Love is patient. Love is kind. It is not jealous. It is not pompous. It is not inflated. It is not rude. It does not seek its own interests. It is not quick-tempered. It does not brood over injury. It does not rejoice over wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. So faith, hope, and love remain these three, but the greatest of these is love. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Ladies and gentlemen, Welcome to round two. <laughs> ding, 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 the wedding Woo! bells are ringing. I would say that the wrestlers are in the ring, but Sam may take that literally. Do not tackle the bride. Hold your horses, Sam. I'm Father James Reese. I'm one of the priests at St. John's Episcopal Church here in Huntington Village. I've been a friend to the Gartner family for many years. It is my privilege to renew the vows of these two insanely in love people on this beautiful, very warm day. Sam and Monica exchanged their first wedding vows last February in Northport Village on 2-22-22 at 2-22 p.m. It wasn't planned. <laughs> it was not planned. It was very cold. You have chosen the opposite climate. What are you doing to me? You know I have to wear a lot of clothes. When we met for Precana, the meeting where the priest and the couple talk about their lives, how they met, what similar interests they have, their beliefs, their values, they talked a lot. Well, Sam talked a lot. Monica chimed in. They shared with me so many things. The wrong distance relationship show, their TikTok account. But as this is a completely unplugged wedding where all cell phones, electronic devices should be in your own pockets and not taking pictures, they shared with me one of their business endeavors that really warmed my heart, the candle making business that they share in. They complement each other. They make up for where the other lacks. One creates the candle, the other does the advertising. They even made a candle for each other, which I then blessed. They are the yin and yang to each other, a to and fro, an alpha and omega. They complete one another. That's what our reading from St. Paul's calls us to recognize this day. We all have faults. We're all a broken people. We're going to mess up. Acknowledging that love isn't just joy-filled moments like today, when you will have to be patient with one another, when you'll have to be kind 
despite what the other is doing. You too. Ask any other older person who is married here in this place. This commitment is hard and going to be tough at times. But the benefits one receives from having such a partner is such a blessing. God is defined as love. God took on flesh. We use the term incarnation in the church. And we believe that incarnation is taken, excuse me, is taking on of the flesh of Jesus. So God's love in the world is represented in how Jesus treated others. And I know for a fact that these two people before you, although maybe flawed in some way, shape, or form, love each other endlessly. They put each other first as he wipes boogers out of her eye. everywhere. Our reading ends with the conclusion that love never fails. But in another translation, it states that love never ends, just as God will never abandon you both. If you keep your eyes focused on the light of Christ that shines from your candles that you make together, you can and will grow in love for one another. The light that the candles create is a sign for the hope in the darkness. It gives illumination where there is despair and sadness. Darkness encompasses many relationships, but my prayer for you both this day is that the light is the represent representation of hope. Love never fails. When times grow tough and the light grows dim, you may find solace and hope in the words from St. Paul's letter to the Corinthians from today. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. When you're struggling, or even when you're celebrating moments of great joy, may you light that candle we blessed at the Napper Tandy's parking lot in Northport. <laughs> May the light it gives remind you of the love that God has for you, similar to the love that you guys have for each other. May your love never fail. Amen. At this time, I invite Sam and Monica to now join their right hands, and they will share vows they have written for each other in the witness of you all here, their loved ones. Do you want me to go first? Or Rock, paper, scissors. Do you want me to go first? Best out of three, or? No, just one. You want me to go first? You can go first, Rosalie. Never mind. <laughs> I know you're nervous. It's okay. Okay. Just hold one of her hands, yeah, and I will cry. hold. How about this? I'm going to put the microphone right here for you. Hello. Oh. Hi, everybody. How are you feeling, Annie? I'm going to hold your hands. Okay. So, <laughs> you ready? Yeah. Monica. <laughs> <laughs> The moment I saw you, new sensation, on the 11th of October 2015, at approximately 12.30 p.m. See, it was like 12.34, I remember that pretty much perfectly. Um, that was the first time in my life I have been utterly speechless. I knew in that moment that my life had been changed forever and that you were incredibly special. And you've proved that every single day since. We've been through the absolute highs of life together and especially recently the absolute lows. You stuck with me by my side without a question every single time. And I promise to always be there for you as you have for me every day for the rest of my life. There's a few other promises I'd like to make. And you can hold me to these as these are being filmed. <laughs> I promise to always let you pet dogs within 500 yards of us in public. And I'll even approach them first if you're too nervous. I'll ask for ketchup for you in restaurants when you're too nervous. I'll make sure your lettuce is thoroughly shredded and I'll make sure there's no pickles or mustard on your burger. I promise not to judge your love, your love for Harry Styles and Damon Salvatore. Too hard. <laughs> and I will let you show me countless hours of TikTok videos, almost every night. You are genuinely the most beautiful person, both inside and out, that I've ever met. So most importantly, I promise to love you unconditionally and to strive every single day to give you the life that you deserve. Come on. Come on. You can't do that to me right now. You have my phone. I do. Wait a sec. Here we go. Okay. It's a bit sweaty, sorry. Okay. Do you want me to hold You have to hold his hand. Okay. Oh, yeah. Sam. <laughs> my first vow is to read through my vows without crying, although I'm not sure I could keep that promise because I've already cried like 800 times today. Whenever I heard the phrase, love at first sight, 
I always dreamed that I would be fortunate enough to experience that. Thankfully, that's exactly what happened when I first saw you. One of my first messages about you was, I want him to be my husband. And can I just say, I actually manifested that because we're here today. <laughs> no matter how much I say it, I will never be able to thank God enough for bringing you into my life. I feel so beyond blessed that out of the billions of people on earth, he chose you to be my soulmate. <sighs> I told you I'd cry. You are so incredibly kind, loving, caring, intelligent, and you have a British accent, which really just tops it all off. <laughs> Not to mention you're beyond hilarious, so I just know you're going to be throwing out some of the best dad jokes to our future kids, and I really can't wait for that. I promise to love you unconditionally, to support you through all that you do, to be faithful, and to always help you find things that are sitting directly in front of you. <laughs> Speaking of that, I promise to stay patient with you, or at least try to be. <sighs> right before her passing, I promised your mom... <sighs> Sorry. I promised your mom that I would always look after you for as long as I shall live. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> so as we stand here today, I promise you the same. Your mom was so proud of the man that you are. And although not physically, <sighs> I know that she's here with us and always will be. I love you so incredibly much. I cannot wait to spend the rest of my life with you. <sighs> Got it. I did not do well with that. <laughs> you did amazing. Fine. You did amazing. <laughs> Come here. You did incredible. <laughs> At this time, I will again ask for God's blessing upon their wedding rings, which they wear. Put your rings out. Bless, O Lord, these rings to be a sign of the vows by which this man and this woman have bound to themselves to each other. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now that Sam and Monica have given themselves to each other by solemn vows, with the joining in, of hands and the giving and receiving of rings, I now redeclare that they are husband and wife in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Let those God has joined together, let no one put asunder. Do not kiss her yet. <laughs> Come on. I invite you to stand as you are able for the prayers. Let us pray together the words our Savior Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Forever, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, creator and preserver of all life, the author of salvation and giver of all grace, look with favor upon the world you have made and for which your son gave his life, especially upon this man and this woman whom you make one flesh in holy matrimony. Give them wisdom and devotion in the ordering of their common life, that they each may be to each other a sign of strength and need a counselor in perplexity, a comforter in sorrow, and a companion in joy. Grant that their wills may be so knit together in your will and their spirits in your spirit, that they may grow in love and peace with you and one another all the days of their life. Give them grace when they hurt each other to recognize and acknowledge their fault and to seek out each other's forgiveness and yours. Make their life together a sign of Christ's love to the sinful and broken world, that their unity may overcome estrangement, forgiveness, heal guilt, and joy conquer all despair. Bestow on them, if it is your will, the gift and heritage of children and the grace to bring them up to know you, to love you, and to serve you. Give them such fulfillment of their mutual affection that they, they may reach out in their love and concern for others. And grant that all married persons who have witnessed these vows may find their lives strengthened and their loyalties confirmed. Grant that the bonds of our common humanity by which all your children are united to one another and to the living to the dead may be so transformed by your grace that your will may be done on earth as it is in heaven where O oh father your son and holy spirit live and reign in perfect unity now and forever amen amen all right i got to <laughs> put your hands together 
O God, you have so consecrated the covenant of marriage that it has represented the spiritual unity between Christ and his church. Send, therefore, your blessing upon these, your servants, that they may love, honor, and cherish each other in faithfulness and patience, in wisdom and true godliness, that their home may be a haven of blessing and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And may God the Father, who ordained that it is good for two people to live in the covenant of marriage, may God the Son, who adorned this manner of life by his first miracle at the wedding of Cana in Galilee, be present with you always. And may God the Holy Spirit, who has given you the will to persevere in your love and your covenant with each other, strengthen your bond. And may God the Holy Trinity, source of all unity, bless you this day and forever. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you both forevermore. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for the second time in the past six months, it is my privilege to reintroduce to you Mr. and Mrs. Sam and Monica Patterson. You may now kiss the bride. <laughs> we did it. We did it. I don't know. Do we? I think we walked down now, right? <laughs> yes!